What's greater? Torah study or doing a mitzvah? So it really depends what your perspective is. If it's about the connection with God, our connection, there's no greater connection to God than what we're doing right now. Torah study. The inner dimension of the person is connected. The brain, the mind, the intelligence, the thoughts and speech. A greater union. There's no greater unity that you can have in this world with God than what we're doing right now, study of Torah. However, there's another perspective to see things. What's God ultimately want? So what do you mean? Does he want us to connect with him, to be united with him? Of course. But there's something that God desires. The unity, of course, that makes sense. But there's something that he desires that actually beyond making sense. And what's that? To be comfortable in this physical, material, dark world that's hidden, that he's hidden, removed seemingly, and that we make him comfortable here. So how do you make a person comfortable when they come to your home? You know what you do? You take a, you take a chair and you put it in front of the person, maybe give them a pillow, that they can be more comfortable uh, with the chair, with a pillow, um, you know, give them some, you know, they took off their boots because it's winter, so maybe you get, if you have an extra pair of slippers, you give them slippers. You make them physically comfortable. Of course, you got to say nice words to them at the same time, but you make them physically comfortable. So God wants to be physically comfortable here. Why? He's not physical. He wants to be comfortable that that physical reality should not be contrary to him. Because the physical reality that we um, have intuitively is that it's physical and separate from God and not naturally connected to God. Yeah, Torah study, spirituality is connected to God, but the physical isn't. So God wants, that's what he wants. He desires to have an abode, to be comfortable, in the physical reality of this world. And therefore, that means we have to do physical action-oriented mitzvahs. Yeah. Putting on tefillin, uh, lighting Shabbos candles, eating physically kosher food. <laughs> right? Um, and the ultimate, tzedakah. As we explained, that there is greater engagement of the individual's animal soul and body and even if there wasn't because you you know the stock market just went up for you and you made a killing but that money could have been used for your and what do we use money for for our sustenance for our pleasure bodily pleasure animal souls enjoyment and what do we do we give some of it away 10% minimum 20% to tzedakah so we're Taken away from our sustenance. Sustenance to what? My whole being. So that mitzvah, therefore, becomes very unique in all of the physical oriented mitzvahs. Um, and therefore, it is equal to all of the other mitzvahs. So we, we don't have competing forces over here. We just have um, different perspective on how to see things. The unity that I can have with God is greatest through Torah. And therefore, any opportunity I have, it's a free moment. You only have a, you only have five minutes to learn? You only have one minute? Well, in that one minute, you're united in one with God. That you can have no greater unity than that, even if it's just one minute. But that's my unity. That's what my soul desires. But what does God want? He wants to be comfortable here. So whenever I have the opportunity, whenever I have the 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 uh, the obligation, that means an opportunity to make God comfortable in this world through an act of a mitzvah. So of course I put aside my Torah in order to do that for God. 
So both things are a reality, both things are a truth, and um, you just need to know how to balance them. So when it's something that I can only do, so then I got to do it and put aside the Torah study that is the desire of my soul to connect. Powerful stuff. All right, questions, comments. Let us see over here. We got some questions. We have Jeffrey then Vida Haiti. Two question marks before you ask a question. Uh, Jeffrey Den- and and Denise, I lost the feed, so I don't have your question. So you have, need to please post it again if you don't mind. Simcha, why do we still worry about things that are happening to us in times of distress? That's ultimately a lack of trust in Hashem. If we know that it's coming from God, we will not stress over it. We'll deal with it, but we won't stress over it. All right. I hope that distinction is clear. Stress means, anxiety means that um, God's not in control and I'm out of control. (laughs) That's what anxiety means. I'm out of control. Right? Why? Because I feel I'm not in control. I want to be in control. Well, that's a lack of faith, a lack of trust that God's in control. And if he's in control... So now it's just about me doing what I got to do. And therefore, there's no anxiety. There's no stress. Focus what you got to do. That's it. Davida, what brings Mashiach fast to a Torah study? Simcha, Tzedaka, Tshuva, Rav Yisrael. All of the above. Got to do it all. No shortcuts. The alternative is just bringing the, the virtue of the different things. And we need to know how to balance. So... But you know what? You know what's going to bring Mashiach? It's called Shlichus. That we know that we're an emissary of God Almighty and of our Rebbe. And that we know that that's what we're doing every moment that we're on a mission towards Mashiach to bring. So every mitzvah that I do and inspire another to do. So whatever I have, share it with another. Share it with another. Jeffrey, what's the name of the Nigon where the Rebbe steps out of his car and waves his fist? I don't know. Could be many of them. So I don't know which video you're talking about. Uh, Jeffrey, you have to let me know. Well, I have to. Uh, Rachel, on Instagram, Torah Mitzvahs, you can't have one without the other, of course. Of course you have to have that's true. We're, 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 you have to have both. The question is, what's greater? That was our discussion over here. So we went back and forth, back and forth. And they both have their greatness. Uh, you know. It's just, of course, a very Jewish way to look at things. <laughs> right? Um... I only saw that one question on Instagram unless I missed something. I think there's someone else that has on Instagram. Second. Uh, what Torah, uh, oh, would Torah be our instruction on how to carry out the mitzvahs? Accomplishing the divine purpose. On one level, that's true. Torah is about explanation of the mitzvahs. So that's it. You know, it's there to explain. That's on one level. Another level, Torah, you're calling God. God himself. To be there as your friend, as your father, that you are connecting to. Connecting in a way that it's, his will and wisdom becomes one with you. So, again, 
there's different different perspectives of the same thing that we can see it in different ways, and we need to be able to see it in all the different ways. That's the other that's you know that's the that's what a Jew is. It's a living paradox. And understanding here is a paradox, back and forth, giving the argument on both sides. And which one is right? They're both right. Um, Okay. Denise, story study brings about consciousness and meaning of our thoughts, words, and actions, and awareness of what Hashem desires from us, and that which is good for us. Absolutely. Right. But that's all a product of Torah study. We're not talking about the product of Torah study. We're talking about what it is. What it is is calling God. What it is is a union with God. Right? The product, byproduct of it is that it brings consciousness to our thoughts. Right? To our words and actions. Absolutely correct. Um, shouldn't we remember that it's our money, that it's not our money but Hashem's? We are only tools to which we... Uh, absolutely correct. So, uh, David is saying that when it comes to tzedakah, if you remember that it's really God's money. Um, it's true in other places. The alternate brings from the sages that say that it's like a loan. Money is given to us as a loan in order to do the right thing. And that's why tzedakah is called tzedek. Righteousness it means doing the right thing with it. Absolutely correct. But that's not the focus over here. That's not the focus. Why not? Because that's not the point over here. What's the point over here that we want to bring out about tzedakah? That it's the ultimate in all mitzvahs. Because what's the point of a mitzvah? Making a dwelling place for God. Right? Dwelling place for God, meaning in the physical material world. Well, you engage more in your physical material world in tzedakah than you do in other mitzvahs. Depending on tefillin, you know, it's not much of a physical act. Lighting Shabbos candles, not so much of a physical act. But tzedakah, what you gave? What do you mean? I worked hard for this. What I'm giving. Or if I didn't work hard for it, this could be used, this money. From what? From me. I could buy a yacht with this money. Well, I don't think it's a robot I could buy, but. <laughs> right? Could use for me. So that's a greater um, dwelling place for God that we create in us and in the physical world through the mitzvah of tzedakah. So absolutely we that's a mindset. That, you know, what you're speaking about, Davida, is about a, a healthy mindset of how to look at money. But here we're talking about about the dwelling place for Hashem that we're creating, which is the purpose that God created the world. So um I hope that brought clarity. Okay, I got that. Okay, one beautiful. Okay, Marcy, please share with us. Uh, hello, Rabbi. Sorry, hello. I got distracted. Um, so yesterday I was uh, learning uh, about um, the spiritual benefits of eating kosher from Rabbi Shmuley. Uh, who was doing a class on this app, and he talked about uh, a, a similar concept, uh, Torah versus Mitzvot, and he talked about uh, fish, right? Um, fish have, kosher fish have fins and scales. Right. It's possible to have fins without scales, but it's not possible to have scales without fins. Right. And he said that's like Torah and Mitzvot, right? No, if, no, one uh, second. No, it's not possible to have fins without scales. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I, I'm, okay. Good. good. I, I wasn't. If you have saying, scales, you have fins. Exactly. Got it. Right. He's saying that's like Torah and mitzvahs, right? If you have Torah but you don't have mitzvahs, you're like a fish. I mean, you didn't say it exactly like this, but uh, you're like a fish with fins but no scales. You need you need both to make it work. Right. Yes. But if you have mitzvahs, then you have Torah as well. Right. Because. 
to have mitzvahs, you need Torah in order to know, to know how to do the mitzvah. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. All right. It was kind of cool to see that come alive again in, uh, in this class. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Beautiful. Okay, uh, one second. Uh, Denise, without Torah study, how would we know that tzedakah is elevated to is elevated? Aren't they one with Hashem? You know, you know, we're we're trying to make you know um, the nuanced distinction here, and you know, um, it's easy to, to see everything in one fell swoop. It's more difficult to learn to make a distinction between things and to, and to appreciate the nuance of things in life and the uniqueness of each thing. That takes a lot more effort. And that's what the alternative is kind of forcing over here. We're going back and forth and ping pong, you know, mitzvahs, Torah, mit, Torah, mitzvahs, you know, and, and so on. And to appreciate the uh, that distinction the uniqueness um, in each one, and and you know that takes a little more concentration. It takes a little more effort, um, digging deeper, and that's what the Alter Rebbe is, is doing with us. So, uh, what happens is prone to do one if one is prone to do one over the other, um, such as Torah study over mitzvahs, or someone who is prone to more tzedakah over Torah. Well, well uh, you know, everybody will have what's... We have to fulfill all of the mitzvahs. We have to study all of the Torah. That's why we learn Rambam, by the way. It gives us a, 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 a insight or a connection to all of the Torah, or at least in the, the revealed parts of Torah. Um, yeah, but so it's not a problem that you're, you have a stronger affinity to one thing over another, one mitzvah over another, um, that's fine. That will be your gateway for everything else. Absolutely, not a problem with that at all. Don't don't look at that as a issue or a deficiency in any way. Not at all. Um, David, an, another Montreal David, who's not here in the room, and we missed you by davening today. Both Torah study and doing mitzvahs are important based on the perspective. Each priority based on Torah study connects uh, us to the inner essence of Hashem and mitzvahs. Giving tzedakah creates a dwelling place for Hashem in this lovely world. Very good. Excellent. Synopsis. Um, Davida wasn't the community way back when divided into those who did Torah study and those who did business. How come it wasn't combined? Well, that's why you needed the Alter Rebbe to come and teach us Tanya. You're right, there was a big divide. The Alter Rebbe tried to mend and heal the divide. Uh, Lori says, studying around was listening to a symphony. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, that's cute. All right, I like that. Nice. Michael! Um, when a Torah study has an impact on the um, intellect of the animal soul, is this too that in the future when we have to do mitzvah, that the um, animal soul accepts it easier to overcome it and uh, that we have uh, do need uh, more power from our uh, intellect to convince the animal soul? You're saying when Mashiach comes? Are you talking about no, Mish- no, or now? No, no before. When, when, right. we, when we study regularly Torah, right. and this uh, has an impact on the uh, on the intellect of the animal soul. Right. Does the animal soul in future in, in the, the after stu- when we study regularly Torah accept to do mitzvah easier? Absolutely correct. Yes, very good. Yeah. Um, that's what actually the phrase, let's go back to the phrase of our sages, Godel Talmud Shemavili De Maisa. Great is study. Why is it so great? Because it will bring you to the action. 
In other words, because you learn about tefillin, for example, well, it's going to bring you to do tefillin. Because you learn about um, the oneness of God, so it'll bring you to your prayer of Shema Yisrael, um, you know, Hero Israel, that Shem Alekeinu, Shem is one. It'll bring you to that prayer or any prayer to a much, you know, uh, a much, you know, deeper connection and a much more ful- greater fulfillment in that mitzvah. So absolutely correct, Michael. Thank you for sharing that. That, you know, great is the study because it'll bring us to the deed. Right, so you know, uh, we learn the more we'll learn Tanya, uh, more and Rambam and, and other things, the more you know, Shabbos will be kept appropriately. Holidays, you know, Purim, if you don't know about the laws of Purim and, and don't appreciate the, the, uh, the mitzvahs of Purim. Because you didn't study about it, so then it just becomes something you got to do rather than a privilege to do, a fargenigan to do. I don't know how to translate that. Pleasure. <laughs> uh, a pleasure to do. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was good. All right. Amazing. As always. I haven't heard from Alan recently or from Norm. What's going on with you guys? I mean, you must have had a real good pouring that you are uh, beyond Adela Yada is still holding by. <laughs> oh, I spoke too fast. Mm-hmm. Alan, please share. Oh. Unmute yourself. Okay, Alan, we don't hear you. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. I I, I got to I got to this uh, I got to it pretty late, uh, so I was just listening for a while. But my my own personal sense of Torah I would I wouldn't call it Torah against mitzvahs, but it, but this kind of this, in a way a distinction um, is that with Torah. But, but the Shabbos is like the holiness in in time and Torah. You can enter the space of holiness. You know, when you when you when you learn Torah, you're inside. Uh, you're inside this uh, uh, elokus. Uh, you're, right. you're inside it. Yeah. And, and with mitzvahs, it's like the instruction set so that you know, uh, you know, for man, so you know how to. Uh, um, you know what your purpose is in this world. Well, Mitzvah says mix, we explained uh, two elements before was an embrace of God, but that's not inside. Embrace you embrace a person on the outside, right? Physically, um, where the embrace of God through Torah is internalized, uh, as we explained, and the mitzvah is, you know, like you said, fulfilling the purpose of a physical creation that God wants a to dwell within the, the the nature of this world, that the nature of this world is hiddenness of God, and through the mitzvah we reveal His uh, His presence. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. All right, folks. All amazing. All amazing. All right. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Don't forget, Rambam at 1 o'clock. Please join us on Zoom, 770-770-6085 is the Zoom address. Or if you want, you can get it on Facebook at Chabad ZK. Thank you, folks. Have a wonderful day.